All right, this is the next part of the kitchen update, and that's adding some under cabinet LED accent lighting. Um, basically, I went with a 3000K color lights that are very warm color light, I feel at least, and uh, I think it'll look good in the kitchen. Um, so this, you know, basically is just what I went through to install them. I started by ordering uh, the parts on Amazon. First thing that came were these little channels to actually put the LED strips in. Um, they come with all the mounting clips and ends and everything else uh, that you need. So um, they're real nice little extrusions and they help uh, diffuse the LED so you don't get the brightness from them. And they make them real easy to um, mount. So I started by going down in the shop and decided to try and cut them with the table saw. So I made it couple of pieces of the wood one that fit tight in there so they wouldn't deform when they were being cut and just another one to back it up um and they're just really a uh, super thin extrusion so you know you have to be kind of careful but um this way i was able to easily cut them without doing any damage so i just use the my table saw and went real slow with the cut so nothing would grab and um there was no problem cutting them whatsoever they were Really a very soft aluminum extrusion. So there's the first one cut and I went back through and I still didn't have my LEDs so I figured I'd get all these strips ready to go and just cut them, measured them and cut them all to the required lengths to go under the different cabinets that I have. Now the channels come in one meter long lengths, um, at least the ones that I bought did. And uh, I had to cut most of them down. I just had to extend one for over the window and after you cut them I mean, just a couple little burrs on there that you had to go back and hit with a file and just remove those edges so um, you wouldn't catch them on anything later and so that the pieces would all slide together easy when you went to do the assembly of them. So once I got the the aluminum channels cut the extrusion there I just put an end cap in to kind of give me an idea of the length for the plastic diffuser there that goes in and then I just set it in and actually I slid it down about a sixteenth of an inch to leave room for expansion and contraction I'm not sure how much they'll expand but I figured they would and then I just wanted to use one of those razor blade knives um, to cut them and cut it really perfect and clean by using the edge of the extrusion as a guide there so that was a real easy way to trim them off and then I went back through and just uh, there are end caps that go on there. These are the ones that I'm putting on first that um, are solid. And I just had to put a couple drops of super glue on them before I slid them in place to really make sure that they stood, they stayed where they were supposed to. Um, if you didn't put anything on them, they would pop out very easily. So this is just a you know real easy, simple precaution. And then the rest of the parts came from Amazon uh, two days later. And here's my strips of LEDs I got. I got some uh, wiring uh, connectors for them. Um, that's just an extra network cable. And then I got another kit that had uh, another strip of the LEDs and um, also had another power supply. And and I got one. Uh, this is a 3 amp power supply. I thought I was going to wire them all together, but I didn't in the end. And then I got a um, <clears throat> PWM dimmer control for them. And I thought that was going to work out good for him, but um, I wouldn't recommend this one because it lasted for about a half an hour and kind of gave out. So um, back to the LEDs now that I've got the uh, strips of LED and there's how they go together into the aluminum extrusions. And you can see once you snap that cover on, it does diffuse them a lot. So basically we started... Uh, measuring them off now these leds have a little mark uh with some terminals like on the circuit board there about every two inches that you can cut them at um it's the only place you can cut these strips at and have all the leds remain functional so i just went through and got as close as i could i made sure that it was at the uh, mark shorter than the aluminum extrusion and there you can see you um you still get the terminals and everything left on both pieces that you cut so I just took the roll and I think it was 16, this roll was like 16 feet long. So I just measured it to uh, each of the extrusions and just rough cut the pieces to start out with. 
And there you can see there's a the little terminal you cut on and a little scissor sign there. And just make sure you cut right down the middle of that so you have enough contact area left. And it's really easy to see how easy it is to cut these to size. Then these uh, little end connectors, I cut them in half and made two out of each one. And the little lip that they slide under and they just um, a little bit tough to get them in there. You got to really push close to the thing and you can see how they just slide in and make contact and lock in place real nice. Then the uh, LEDs have a adhesive backing on them that you have to peel off and I it you just peel it off and try to get them as centered as you can and try to keep them as straight as you can on these in these channels and just go along and make sure that you push them down good because the uh, channel actually from what I understand these channels actually act like a heat sink to these LEDs and they do make them uh, have a longer life when you do use the aluminum channels so you just have to try to stretch them out and get them as straight as you can down the middle of the, the channel there like that. Now there are all different types of these LED strips available with all different chips on them and different brightness chips and um, different K ratings. And you can even get some of them that have a um, multiple color arrangement on them too. So you, know, you just have to search for what you're looking for to meet your needs. So there it is. The, um, everything's stuck in there and just for safety's sake I went back and I just put a drop of super glue on the uh, back of that connector just to make sure it wouldn't pull off while I was working on them later and trying to add wires and install them. So that's basically what the strips look like put together and then um, there's another end that for the wiring to come out and that's got a little hole in it that the wires come right through and same thing, I put them on the other end and I put a couple drops of super glue in place to um, actually hold them there and keep them from popping out. So each one, as I, as I put them together like that, I uh, did go over and had the power supply plugged in and I did test them all just to make sure I didn't mess anything up up to this point. So there they are, just... Uh, hooked them up to the power supply for a little bit um, just to make sure they worked and then snapped in this diffuser and you can see how it actually really does uh, spread the light out more evenly and kind of doesn't make it so you're just staring at that blank chip so uh, you can see here it's a real simple process to put these little light assemblies together if you've never dealt with these before um, so there they are I've got all my all my lights needed while well, there's one more or two more that I'm not showing here but um here they are all of them that I need for the uh, cabinets that they're going under and one long one to go up over the kitchen window and there's how those little clips the mounting clips that come with a mount they just uh, screw up into the cabinet and I made a template so I could drill my cabinets all the same and it would be real easy and quick to mount them on there so this is looking up at the bottom of the cabinet and actually I had to go back and wash these things later. I couldn't believe how much grime was up there from 30 years of use I guess. So I just lined it up and I um, drilled a pilot hole for the screw on one corner and then I just flipped it end to end and set it on the other side of the cabinet and did the same thing. Just drilled um, a pilot hole part of the way up through there. Just uh, to, just just to give the screws, make them easy to start and go in. So now that I got the pilot hole drilled. It's just uh, it just take the, uh, the screws were provided with the 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 uh, those extrusions, and so were the clips. So I just mounted uh, two clips under each cabinet, one about three inches in from each edge, and that's basically what it takes to mount these guys. Now another thing that I had to plot out basically before I started was uh, exactly where I wanted the wiring to run and stuff. So I'm using the front corners of the cabinets that really are pretty much hidden and I'm going to um, glue them in with silicone later. But I, So there you see I just drilled up through that bottom front corner of the cabinet before I put the uh, light in place and then the light just actually snaps right up into those two clips that I just screwed in place. 
So um, that's what it looks like. And luckily that three quarter inch lip on the bottom of the cabinet was enough to hide them totally so that you don't see any of the, um, the light assembly itself when they're on. So that turned out really good by keeping them real far forward. Any further back and you would have gotten glare off of them I think. So I snapped them all under the um, cabinets and these are actually for the ones for over on the side also that I, I put them under everything as I went along. And same thing every time I put one in place I just went back and plugged the power supply in and just did a quick test just to make sure they're all going to work when I'm done. And then um, I had that one area I didn't paint before when I painted the room. Just a little gap around the uh, window frame there and up on the ceiling. And I had to go back and paint that before I could put the light up over the sink. And then I started attaching wires to uh, the ends of these. For the most part I used, um, I had some box of telephone wire leftover laying around that I used. Um, it's a four wire conductor and what I did is I just um, I just soldered the two wires on each end together and I used uh, doubled them up for power and it's in the wall rated and you know it's pretty much a good rated wire so I figured that would work and everywhere I put them together I um, I soldered the wires together and then I put heat shrink tubing on them and then I um, actually went back after that those connections were shrunk and then I put another outer jacket of heat shrink tubing over them so they were really um, well protected now I um, actually ran a separate wire back from each of these little light assemblies back to a central spot for the transformer on this side which um, actually that spot turned out to be right above the microwave the uh, microwave oven had an, there was an additional outlet up there so I decided to buried in the closet so you just had to um i just kind of stayed to the front corner of those cabinets where you couldn't see the wires once they were installed and then um between the cabinets i like from there i went over and i um actually went right up into that hollow spot under the cabinet over the microwave and i used that as a channel for the um the wires to go up and there they are they come out in that same hole that i drilled for the microwave plug a little while ago so I got that all done and I got the paint. You can see the paintings uh pretty much all done. Just have to peel the tape off and um then it's uh time to test some of the lights. I just as I went along I and I brought each one back, I would hook it up to the transformer and just, you know, double check it as you went along because you don't want to have to go back after you're all done and try to debug something. So then I, um, for the light over the sink, I made a, a channel, actually a piece of wood that uh, the light mounted on the bottom. It also had a wiring channel for this set of wires to go back through and come out on the other side. So they'd all meet over on the other side by that cabinet also. So it did take a little bit of while, a little time to get them all in place. But basically they're all hidden pretty good. And um, these little plastic fishing boxes are really great for keeping your supplies in. Like this one is for my shrink tubing. And here it is. Got dark out and I turned them on. And you can pretty much see that um, they're pretty much a nice, nice really warm glow. Um, I'm not sure if they're too bright or not yet. I did try that PWM uh, dimmer and that worked for a while then they started flickering and then I realized that the uh, connector in it had come loose and I tried soldering it and it just wouldn't work after that so I don't know if I messed it up or it actually um, you know self-destructed so there's all the wiring up in the closet comes out and um, there's a remote control that I'm using one of those woods remotes and everything's hooked into there and there's another one of those fishing boxes with my little wire hangers. And there's the remote control unit that works. All, that's going to work all the lights when I get done. So you can see here, even uh, during a cloudy day when it's cloudy outside, the um, lights actually do even cast a, a real nice um, glow on everything. I'm real happy with the collar of them. It's a very warm collar, and I can't wait till the counter and everything gets in. And then I can do the fine-tuning on the... Um, the actual brightness of them if I have to but I'm starting to doubt that I will have to and um, they do do um, 
light up the kitchen nicely and then I went back and I got the wiring done on this other side and I wound up uh, using an outlet in the uh, pantry cabinet to run the wires back to so I got a second transformer on this side and then I had some extra left so I put them over our uh, coat rack where you walk in the door figured it would be nice to just kind of light the little entryway there a little bit so you could find your coat easy. In the meantime, my wife's been crocheting these little uh, rabbits for herself. She did a really neat job on making these little uh, Easter bunnies for the table for herself. So pretty much this is, you know, how how easy it is to install these little LED strips. And um, you just buy the pieces. I got mine on Amazon. You can buy them on eBay or anywhere else. But they're really pretty simple to cut to the length that you need and um, patch together and then just hook up to a power transformer. And that microwave also has a, um, a LED on it with a low setting for a night light. So pretty much you can see here's how um, here's how they look. And they do give a cast a nice warm color. And we'll see once they get over to granite. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.